How big is the Jewish community here? So Cabo, moving down to Cabo, it's interesting because um, we don't really, we're not, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't be able to say we have a very strong self-sustained community, but we have the, between the different demographics, between the tourists and the timeshare mm -hmm. owners and the winter, the snowbirds, and, and the, we have about 200 locals that live here year-round, you know, we, we, we're, we're kept busy. Okay. But uh, 200 locals is not a big community to have, yeah. you know. So it's a very small community, but again, we, you know, we, we sort of keep busy with all the other demands. Welcome to the Nick Fong Podcast. As the broker and owner of Ronaval Real Estate, Nick has spent nearly 20 years in Baja, California, sir. And in this podcast, he'll be talking everything Baja from food and culture to real estate and property management. And now, here's your host, Nick Fong. All right, welcome back to the podcast. We're on location at the synagogue of Cabo San Lucas. Rabbi, Mr. Nice, Benny. Nice to be here. <laughs> thank you for hosting us. And this is a beautiful facility you guys have built. How long has this been around? So we've been around here 14 years. Uh, the synagogue's been here, uh, we moved in about two years ago, right? Yeah. Right, uh, 20, 21, 22, just around COVID. Yeah. For, for those that don't know, because it's kind of hidden, um, a hidden gem, where are we located? So we are located a block away from the marina, mm -hmm. which uh, right at the entrance at the bottom of the Pedregal, we have the beautiful mountains behind us. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's, it's uh, the truth is for people who have, who have seen where we've come from, this is, you know, just the, even, even more awesome, you know. But, where uh, were you before two years ago? So we bounced around a little bit. We moved down mm -hmm. here in 2009. Mm -hmm. uh, we bounced around. We had, I uh, started in a little home. We went a couple places on the marina. We were in the mall at some point, And then we uh, rented a little apartment a couple of blocks up. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, we've been there probably since about 20, 2011. Mm -hmm. um, and then moving into here was just a different world. And for you, what was your first introduction to Cabo San Lucas? What brought you? So in, in, in 2003, um, as Cabo really started to explode, there was a handful of Jewish businessmen, you know, Americans, Mexico City, uh, people that, that, that uh, came down here, uh, a couple of Israelis, you know, a nice little salad of, of different cultures. Yeah. And uh, they all, they sort of all used to congregate and get together for holidays and whatnot. And, and the word got out that they were looking for a rabbi. Uh, I'm, I'm, I've grown up my whole life uh, from a particular sect called Chabad, which is uh, we're, 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 we, more, we align more with, let's say, the traditional Orthodox Judaism. Mm -hmm. uh, but the difference is that we, we, we preach or, we, or we, we, we believe in going out and extending out to any type of Jew, regardless of what their background, affiliation, interests, preferences are doesn't matter. There's no judgment. And it's just a matter of bringing Jews together to come back to their heritage. And is that something that you started or is that like a growing trend? In this is a movement that, it is. that uh, I mean, the, the, the movement of Chabad goes back about 240 years, mm -hmm. but uh, it's a sect within the Hasidic line of, 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 of Jewish, uh, of, of the faith. Mm -hmm. um, and then it, about 1951, middle of the 40s, uh, it was a great rabbi, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson, the Rebbe, our, our grand leader who uh, sort of catapulted it. This is also coming right out of the Holocaust, so you can imagine that world jewelry was at a very big, you know, a, a real low, sure. uh, emotionally, spiritually, in every, every, any possible way. And he came out with this radical explosion of sending people around the world to sort of revive and you know, the Jewish spirit. So uh, again, I'm not that old, but I was born in the 80s and, uh, and I was brought up within this culture of, you know, you, you thank God you, you have, you've been so blessed and we have a way that we, that we believe in and we have a community and we have togetherness, but then there's those that are outside that haven't been blessed with that ability. So it's, it, it, the, 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 uh, the proselytizing that we do is all within the Jewish community, within yeah. the Jewish people. How big is the Jewish community here? So Cabo, moving down to Cabo, it's interesting because um, we don't really, we're not, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't be able to say we have a very strong self-sustained community, but we have the, between the different demographics, between the tourists and the timeshare owners mm -hmm. and the winter, the snowbirds, and, and the, we have about 200 locals that live here year round, you know, we, we, we're, we're kept busy. Okay. But uh, 200 locals is not a big community to have, yeah. you know, so it's a very small community, but again, we, you know, we, we sort of keep busy with all the other demands. 
Where are you originally from? I'm from Canada, Montreal. Montreal, Canada. Yeah, so. I got to give my uh, token apology. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So you came here in the early 2000s. Then. So, so we moved down in 2009. All right. uh, the community sort of developed and it evolved. There was a rabbi coming down from Tijuana mm. uh, every couple of weeks. And, uh, and then, uh, and then they, you know, they, they said, we're ready to go solo. So uh, there was actually a rabbi that came down and did a little stint for a couple of months before me. And uh, it, I was freshly married. We had a little baby. I'm a 24-year-old kid, you know, just idealistic. I know I'm looking. I want, I want, I want to make my life in a weird, uh, crazy city yeah. and do my mission. And, 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 uh, and I got a phone call. The rabbi in Tijuana says, hey, come down here and, and, and check it out. Come for a Shabbat for a weekend. Mm -hmm. And so we came. This was the last week of 2008. Myself, my wife, my, our little eight-month-old. And... Uh, we were sitting around the table, there's 65 people, and we were just blown away. We said, you know, and, and this is all, you know, I mean, Cabo back then, of course, still the fastest growing tourist city in Mexico, and there was so much promise for the future. So we knew we were getting into, you know, very small, and we're going to, but we saw this promise of the future, and we said, wow, we want to be a part of this. I mean, besides for just the spectacular city that right. coming from Canada, this was, you know, <laughs> they took me scuba diving once. I was like, Jews, no Jews, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what it's going to take to move down. <laughs> was that intimidating, though? being a 20 something year old and being the rabbi in a foreign country um i mean yes and no it, it was it, it it came with challenges um it came with uh acclimating to to again i, I grew up in a very closed i'll be the first one to say we grew up in a very closed community mm -hmm. the box you know all the religious tropes and all it, it was all there um so we needed a degree of open-mindedness to venture out but but together with that this was what we were brought up to do. So yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to my next, my, my next stage of what we were meant to do in this life. So, so I, you know, it was, it was exciting. We tackled it head on. We had a good attitude, but it was challenging. Yeah. Certainly. Is it common for a rabbi to be so young? In our circles? Yeah. I mean, we finish school, we, we finish rabbinical school. We'll get, to, you know, we get a degree and, and yeah. then we're, we're off and about. And, you know, I mean, generally, I guess the, the classic image of the rabbi is some old dude with a white beard. Sure, you know, that's my over. image. Yeah, of course. But uh, they all start somewhere. You You'll know? get there someday, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on it. And you came to Mexico not speaking Spanish. So I, I, I did, I mean, one of, the, one, of the, one, of the, one of the reasons why I got the gig was because I, in my, in my, back in my yeshiva days when I was learning in, in, in religious school, I had done a one-year stint in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Okay. So I, 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 you know, we were a bunch of American guys. It was like sort of a, um, um, what's it called? Um, exchange program? Exchange, exchange program where we went to Argentina and right. uh, we were about 15, 20 guys. And, um, and so I, I, I made a lot of friends there and I, I learned the basics. Granted, it was terrible, but I, I can sort of keep up a conversation. Okay. And, uh, you know, I came in and I was thrown into it and I, I was, I learned pretty quick. And now you have six children. Correct. And the range, if my math is correct, 14 is the oldest? Five, 15. 15. 15. Yeah. Well, so when we moved down here, he, he turned one. Okay. We moved down here about a week before his birthday. And the youngest yeah. is? The youngest is uh, two, just about. He'll be two in, in, in two weeks. Wow. And yeah. what's it like living in Cabo for you and your family? So we, I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't have a, 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 a bad word to say about it. I mean... I'm, you know, I mean, there's always challenges living there, but uh, just, you know, as a Jew, we're always nervous, especially when you venture out of the community, you sort of feel safe. There's, you know, there's anti-Semitism and this and that. And, and, you know, I've been a victim of it, being in Europe, being in Argentina, traveling around sometimes, uh, you know, gets, we, we, we get some uncomfortable looks and sometimes mm. even worse. Um, but Cabo has been the most magnificent, I, I, can't, I, I don't have, I don't have, I, there's no words I can share of our gratitude to the city for yeah. opening up to us. And, you know, I tell my kids, my kids complain, why are we so far away? Where is, we don't have kosher food. We don't have this. I'm like, kids, you, you have no idea, man. You know, like to, to grow up in a place where you can just roll out of bed and go to the beach. Yeah. It's just, it's just unbelievable. And the, the people here are magnificent. The culture is it, it's fantastic. And I know people, we have common friends and people and the thing that you mentioned earlier, you don't necessarily need to be Jewish. Like you, the heritage, you might have the heritage, but not a practicing Jew. And you invite those people in. Well, so, so yeah, so our, our, 
again, Jewish people have all gone through their experiences and gone, you know, everybody, in fact, has their experience, has their story, has their background, has their whatever brought them to where they are now. And, and, and it's easy to judge, mm -hmm. but uh, it's not right to judge until, until, until you've experienced what they've experienced. And so our job is not to judge people. There's nobody. God loves everyone. Mm -hmm. And all he wants is for people to do the best they can. So yeah. that's, that's really what we, uh, you know, we try to sort of present the religious aspect of it, the rituals and the Shabbat and the holidays and the prayers and all that in an optimistic light saying, listen, if, 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 you're doing, if you're doing Judaism or any religion for that matter and you're not enjoying it, then you're doing it wrong, mm -hmm. right? So everybody to their level, you know, and we don't, uh, you know, I personally, I, we were not allowed to get in a car on, this, on the Sabbath, Friday night, this Saturday, at, after, you know, after nightfall. We're not allowed to get in a car. We're not allowed to use our phones or electricity. Sure. How people come to synagogue, you know, I'm not, we don't, we don't, uh, we don't push anybody away. You right. know, sometimes in the odd time, I'm praying, and a phone will go, will start ringing, and everyone's, you know, oh my gosh, are you crazy? And you know, just you sing a little louder. That's all, you know. So that's. And it. for the note, we're not filming on a Saturday. Uh, right. Exactly. <laughs> Hey, thanks for being a part of the Nick Fong Podcast. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast to get the latest updates. And if you're watching this on our social channels, please like and share. And if you want to be featured or you want me to talk on a certain topic, food, activities, culture, real estate in the Baja, drop a comment. Um, and the facility that we're in right now, the synagogue, tell us about it. It's absolutely stunning so this synagogue was uh, was just uh, a, I mean we still pinch ourselves when we when we walk through this building um, never in our wildest dreams where we uh, you know something we regret that we were so closed minded just you know we came in and we envisioned in the, in the best case you know another 5 10 15 years we'll rent a little storefront on the marina we'll have space for 30 40 people we'll have a little gig going on and you know that's about as good as it's going to get and then in 2011, we were here for two years, and it was actually Hanukkah. Mm -hmm. So we do a large menorah lighting on the marina for the, you know, for the couple of Jews. And, um, and uh, the morning after that event, I got a call from one of the founders of the community, and he says, uh, um, you know, there's, you ever heard of this guy, Dr. Shenazi? And I, I've heard the name here. He has a place here, and he comes, and he, you know, just, uh, he loved what was going on, and he wants to... Uh, he wants to help out, and he said to start looking for a property. So that was the start of a, of, of really a miraculous journey for us. It was our it was our Hanukkah present, I guess. Uh, they purchased the property in 2014, and then and then this building he he got together all the funds and everything, and uh, to have this building put up. So it was, I I really don't I, I I don't even take credit for it. Again, I I didn't I did I didn't go out imagining envisioning this. It was really his vision, and mm -hmm. and he pushed us beyond as well, and. You know, and it was it was challenging at times, but just, just to, to walk in here and to see what he's built, and you know, now the challenge is to fill it up. You know, yeah. we have a we have a, we struggle with getting 10, 15 people together for for services sometimes, and they have a sanctuary here for 140 people. Yeah. So it's uh, the, the challenge is accepted, but you know, now it's we're 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 operating at a whole different level now. Right. How big is the facility, the synagogue? The property is uh, 2,100 square meters. 2,100 so, square meters. So yeah. in square feet, that's over. 22,000 yeah. square feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the construction. Um, what does it all entail? So when, what, what was amazing is that uh, it, it's, it's a dream for any rabbi to be able to sit down and say, okay, I got this community. These are the needs of my particular community. And how do we build that? You know, mm -hmm. A lot of people get an existing building and they have to sort of make do and compromises here Retrofit. and there. But for us, it was like, no, 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 guys, you're sitting down. Just... Lay it out. What do we need? Make the list. So a synagogue. You got tourists that come here that are asking for kosher food. Let's get them a restaurant. We need a restaurant. Now we have two. We have upstairs here. We have downstairs. Um, there's people, like I said, people who can't drive on, on Shabbat, the religious, more religious people. They might be staying in a hotel or in a resort that's too far. What do you have that I, that I can stay closer to be by services? Let's build a couple of guest rooms. So we have four little hotel rooms downstairs, and it, it, it's used on the weekends for those people, holidays, you know, and they'll come and they'll stay there. Uh, they built us a beautiful little apartment here. Right. Um, and there's, of course, the sanctuary, the synagogue. And then there's in the back, we have a little area where we, where we do little Hebrew lessons with kids once, twice a week. 
and then there's a, there's a mikvah, which is a, sort of the ritual bath. It's a, it's a, it's a bathhouse, and it's meant to, uh, for people that wish to immerse and purify themselves is a special way by which the water is gathered. Mm -hmm. it's a, and it's an expensive process, but it's, 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 a, it's in the back there. And it's, you know, it's a beautiful sort of spa-like. And, you know, and that's, that's really so like that. I, I think we cater to all the needs that, uh, that Kabbalah would need with regards to a Jewish in life. For you as a rabbi, what kind of events and things are you doing in the community and within the synagogue? So th th that all switches. The, the hard part of living here, the real challenging part of living here, is the adapting or having not only me adapt, but everybody in the community sort of has to go along with the ups and downs of, of, of the seasons. Right. Uh, when it's a high tourist season, the restaurants are overwhelmed or overcrowded or there's, there's orders going out. There's people that need, there's people that want to use the mikvah. There's people that need a, need, need a quorum of 10 men to do a special prayer service to commemorate the passing of somebody. There's all mm -hmm. different, you know, sudden things that are coming up and I'm almost completely overwhelmed with that. And then when the season goes down, of course, we, we try to keep our, we have uh, weekly classes that we give to different, uh, I have to give classes in Hebrew, to give classes in English, I give some classes in Spanish. So, you know, it's, uh, that, that, that jumps around a little bit. Of course, we have the, the consistent every Saturday. We have Mondays and Thursdays, we have prayer services in the mornings. Mm -hmm. Saturdays, we have Friday nights and Shabbat. We, it comes with a community meal as well. where the community comes together and we sort of try to, uh, you know, give them some time together that they can sort of recharge their batteries as a community. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a holiday coming up this week, the holiday of Shavuot, which commemorates 3,335 years to the day of when the Jewish people received the Ten Commandments around Mount Sinai. That'll be this Friday. So uh, we actually have a lot of tourists that are coming into town to, to be here in Kabul for the extended weekend, and, and they'll join us for the services. We're going to have a nice big party. There's custom to eat dairy, so they're making all the dairy. You smell the cinnamon buns. We have cheesecakes and all, you know, the ice cream. and So that'll be exciting. Um, you know, and then we read the Ten Commandments in the synagogue. And, uh -huh. and so it's, uh, you, have, you have the consistent holidays that come, and then we're going to go to Rosh Hashanah, the high holidays, and you have Hanukkah. Passover is very large. We have 170 people here that come for a dinner mm -hmm. every year. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, uh, there's the consistent areas, and then there's the, you know, the surprises that come. <laughs> the so. lulls and the ebb and flow of any, yeah. it's, it's kind of like a business, no? Absolutely. I mean, how many people are you staffing? I, I just entering the building. There's people cleaning. There's, yeah. uh, I'm sure, yeah, maintenance people. Yeah. So the building uh, staffs uh, four or five between maintenance, the 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 manager, the maintenance, and then mm -hmm. you, the restaurant downstairs, which they lease the place. There are another six, seven people. We up here, the Chabad, but the restaurant here, and with you know the catering that we'll do and all the preparation work and all stuff. We have another seven or eight people. So it's all about it's about 15, 20 people in total between everybody that mm -hmm. are that are you know that are. Again, you have quieter times and you have busier times. Sure. What is, what are a couple things or one thing that non-Jewish people don't know about the Jewish community that you could tell us? I, I, I would say one of the, uh, one of the things maybe that, um, that I, I don't know if it's a, if it's a self-induced thing, but sometimes I, I, I feel like people are hesitant to, uh, to approach me and mm. to uh, start a conversation or to uh, ask questions, to come, come into the building and just, you know, join. Uh, uh, we're, we're, we're very welcoming. We're very open. Um, we, we, as an example, where I grew up, or when I, when I got married, and we lived in, in, in Brooklyn for a time in a very, very dense Jewish community. So I don't know if you've ever heard, they have this, uh, as a community, they, you know, there was once a guy, he, he had a heart attack. They, they called the regular ambulance and it took too long they were stuck in traffic the guy died in the meantime mm. so that was it one guy took it upon himself he said okay we're looking for volunteers we're going to teach volunteers how to be emts yeah and we're creating this volunteer emt service within the community so now now you'll you literally have a community with maybe three two three four hundred of these volunteers there's three of them on every single block and so you have a central number centralized little office with somebody picking up the phones and almost all of them are volunteers. They raise money to buy the machines and whatnot. Everyone has a little little first aid kit or, or bigger equipment in the back of their cars. They have now they have little lights and cherries and whatnot. And you know, something happens to somebody, you pick up the phone, 30 seconds later you have three EMTs saving yeah. lives. And that's called Hatsala. Hatsala in Hebrew means saving. Mm -hmm. Right. So th th that's just like a sort of an int inter-community volunteer service. And it took time until 
you know, you have African-American community that lives together in Brooklyn. It's very dense, very, you know, there's a lot of tension sometimes. But you have people from outside the community that caught on and said, hey, wait, we have so many MTs. And it's like, could we use it also? And it's like, of course, you like, oh, right. my gosh, this is for everybody, you know. So so, so it, it's, it's a beautiful thing that you have back there. And, and, and so, so many times I, I, I see people sort of hesitating, you know, and I'm like, dude, just... I'm, I, I try to be normal. <laughs> you know? Did you just say dude? I think you just I said did, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You're the coolest rabbi. <laughs> It's that's amazing. amazing. That's what it takes me to be cool. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's about as, the, the worst word you're going to hear from me. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. But I think that's um, a good point. I mean, for me, some misconceptions or my image, a rabbi older. Yeah. Not so approachable. Like, what am I right. going to talk to a rabbi yeah. about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort, um, of, uh, sort of completely aloof and like, you know, not down to earth. Totally. Untouchable. Yeah, like almost, this, like. Unrelatable. Yeah. Yeah, so so I, I try to, uh, we try to bring it all down and, and sort of, you know, again, make, make y- yes, we're all there to get closer to God and there's, there's, there's that element, but uh, all in, 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 with a good spirit and, yeah. you know, and just happiness and joy and that's what a community is about, is about just feeling that support and that love for one another. So that's what we try to do. Well, Rabbi, I appreciate you taking a few minutes and yeah. explaining to us where you came from, yeah. talk about the Jewish community, um, and everyone listening or watching, if you want to stop by, there's literally an open door. I just walked right in, <laughs> yeah. and come say hi to the although, Rabbi. Although, although there are many that complain about that, they're like, you guys are way too open. <laughs> so, <laughs> say hi to the Rabbi, and yeah. as the Rabbi told me, soon you will be calling him by his first name, Benny. Yes. <laughs> so, thanks, Benny. I appreciate pleasure. it. Pleasure. Absolute pleasure. All right. What an honor. Until the next one, bye for now. Thank you. Gracias. Fantastic. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Nick Fong Podcast. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast and the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Ronaval Real Estate. And follow Nick on Instagram at Nick Fong underscore Ronaval. Ready to find your Baja dream home? Check out the latest property listings at ronaval.com or findmexicohouses.com. Hasta luego.